Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in the back. The question was posed. What should a sister do if she has a suitable proposal from a person of deen, a person of religion, and her father, being a praying father, rejects this suitor. So we know the hadith of the Prophet wasallam that if a suitable suitor comes for a woman's hand in marriage and the father rejects this person that there will be fitna. And the scholars, the Fuqaha, have mentioned that in such a case, then perhaps the affair can be raised to a qadi or a wakil from the qadat or the uh, the Islamic judge or the ruler. And the Prophet said, La nikah illa bi wali. So we know we have to have wali. So in this situation, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best because everyone's particular situation is different, we should always strive our best to maintain those ties of kinship. That as long as the Father is praying, we should do our best to respect his judgment. And in regards to that, to look deep, deep into the affair to make sure it's just not a matter of following our desires and our nafs. But sometimes the situation merits where it becomes impossible to gain the father's consent and the person is known of good religion and stability. So, in this situation, perhaps going to, and in the situation of being in America and Canada, going to the Imam who performs such duties, or if there's an Islamic center, then this is in the pl place of the Qadi, or the, uh, for, is the Islamic institution in those uh, localities. And One thing that I will mention, and which was also contained in the question, with regards to my personal experience, and with regards to looking at the reality of the situation today, because this question seems to come up from a lot of our youth, and for those of us who've been either on the path of Talab al ilm and left our countries or the path of Hijrah for those who've made Hijrah and those circles are usually fairly small that what I have seen we know the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true and at the same time we should tie our camels so to speak meaning that we make preparation because this is tawakkal ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the ulama mentioned, tawakkal ala Allah is i'timad ala Allah wa fi'l asbab. It is relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making effort to attain whatever you're trying to attain. So in the situation, for example, what I've seen even amongst Salafi women in places like Yemen and places which are even very closed society which is in very conservative societies and education is not emphasized unfortunately especially among Salafis that they shun the school institutions uh, and uh, for the various reasons of mixing and so forth and also what's taught in the, the institutions but what I've seen also as a trend and, and we see this in Saudi Arabia, which is a different reality as well, because there's no mixing and so forth, is a massive influx 
of women into the educational institutions. And so from my experience and looking at the reality of the world is that I believe, this is not a fatwa, but I believe and the reality shows us that the world is becoming a much more difficult place to live in. And our reality is definitely not like the reality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi their time. Our time, to, uh, 1400 years later, is very different. In fact, in the past 50 years, we could talk about how societies, societies, whole societies have changed. And with that being the case, with the difficulty in the economic situation around the world, and especially in the West, that I would advise that sisters seek, continue their education on online courses and in situations where there won't be fitna and they won't have to do mixing. But at the same time, they should not shut those doors because the reality is the rise with the rise of divorce and the difficult and our backgrounds in coming to Islam and even those who are born Muslim and what we're exposed to in this time and age, preparation becomes necessary. And one example I'll give you is because, or is a situation in that we read from the Fuqaha and we see in the classical text a certain reality that those texts were written from in points of view and circumstances because generally from Muslim environments meaning you have Muslim parents, you have Muslim families, these are Muslims coming together and there's a certain social structure in place but for those of us who don't have that environment and we live in non-Muslim lands and we're exposed to the internet and we're exposed to all of these things we are bombarded and our senses are bombarded and our needs and desires are in fact not the same, not in the same accordance. So due to this fact, and this is even the case here where I'm living in Saudi Arabia, and there is a lot of divorce because of different expectations. So my advice, without getting off too far off topic, is that strive your best to continue to tie your camel, to prepare yourself in case there's nothing wrong with that. Iqtimad al-Allah wa fi'la asbab. Rely strictly upon Allah and make uh, uh, effort. This is complete tawakkul right there. It's not the tawakkul of the Sufis who just say, I rely on Allah and they don't seek their risk. No, that's not tawakkul. And, and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah speaks about the two extremes. And then those who go to the extreme of shirk because they rely so much on the asbab and they don't rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are two extremes. But we, as Ahl Sunnah, we want to be in the middle. So we want to make effort and rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the end result. So I would advise, as I would advise my own children and even my girls, to prepare themselves. And I would strive to prepare themselves to prepare them by facilitating their education, even if it were to be online, to be away from fitna, or if there's a way to go to, uh, you know, s segregated institutions where it's just for women or what have you, because this is the reality of the time we live in. So there's nothing wrong with furthering one's education. And I hope that that is something beneficial with regards to what was asked. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive us of our many shortcomings.